Good day and welcome to the presentation on economic order quantity. We're going to start off by looking at what are the reasons a company would want to hold inventory. The first reason would be your transactions motive. This is where a company holds stock to meet production and sales requirements. To give you an example of this would be a store such as Pick and Pay, where they hold all these products on their shelves so that customers can come in and they can pick what they want and then they can actually go to the till and pay for these products that they want. The next one would be your precautionary motive. Now this is when the future supply and demand are uncertain and the company wants to hold inventory in case of unpredictable business. Now an example of this could be something such as let's say a cake shop who bakes cakes and they need flour and butter and a whole bunch of ingredients to bake their cakes every day but they might want to keep a little bit of extra ingredients or a little bit of extra stock just in case there is a slightly higher demand that day or that week for their products or in case the supermarkets run out of flour they don't want to be sitting without flour when they have cakes that they need to bake. The next one would be your speculative motive. Now this is where an entity would want to take advantage of raw material or stock at lower prices. For example, let's use our cake shop again. The supermarkets are selling flour at 50% off. The cake shop is going to try and buy as much of the flour at that price that it can without running the risk of that stock actually going obsolete. So they might want to stock up on some of the flour or the butter or what any other ingredient that might be sold at a, at a discount or a much lower price at the moment because that reduces their cost to actually produce that product and that means that's a little bit of extra money in their pocket when they sell this product. So now we know what the reasons are why we'd want to hold stock. But now we also need to take into account the total cost of stock. And the total cost of stock is made up of the purchase cost, which is the actual cost for that specific product that we want to buy, as well as the ordering stock. Now, if we have to order stock and we want it delivered, we would be required to pay a delivering fee. So that delivery fee would be part of our ordering stock. If you decide you want to order a bicycle from a store, you first of all, you either need to pick up the phone and make the order, which means you're paying for that telephone bill. You would, or if you weren't going to do that, you might have to log on to the internet or however you would place this order. But there would be a cost involved that would be related to ordering of the stock. And then as we mentioned, when the stock actually gets delivered, you would be required to pay the delivery fee. There could also be stuff such as costs related to getting this order together for the customer such as um, one cart and at the moment has a thing where they will you place an order through the app and then they have someone that actually goes into the shopping centers they pick the groceries for you they put the whole order together and you pay it and then someone comes and delivers this to your house now, you pay for the delivery to your house, but you also pay for that person that got this order together. But this is the same with companies when they possibly order some stock. They might have, the supplier will have someone getting this order all together for the customer so that this order is ready to be delivered to the customer. 
Then the next item that forms part of the cost when dealing with inventory is the cost of storage. Now, this is in the sense of your incremental insurance costs because remember any stock that is held on your premises you should have insurance for it because what happens if there's a fire or what happens if somebody breaks in and they steal all the stock so you would need insurance on all the stock that's held and obviously the more stock that's held the more insurance would be required then in addition to that would be incremental warehouse and storage costs so if let's say for example you have a storeroom to hold stock but this storeroom can only hold 1000 let's say a pair of shoes so if you order 1,200 pairs of shoes, you're going to have to arrange for additional storage for those extra 200 pairs of shoes. So that is where additional costs of storage to store those shoes would come in. And then the last one or another example would be your incremental handling costs to handle these stocks that are being stored. And now, very important, when it comes to ordering stock or having stock levels, you want to find a balance between the ordering stock and the cost of storage. And this, when you have this balance, you would have an optimal storage level. Now, very important, only costs that are affected by the amount of inventory held or stored are taken into account when determining your economic order quantity. Costs that will remain unchanged regardless of how much inventory is ordered are irrelevant when calculating economic order quantity. For example, the warehouse manager's salary. So the goal with economic order quantity is to actually find your optimal store stock level. Now, why is this? You don't want to have too little stock because if you have too little stock, your customers are going to be upset. They're going to buy somewhere else. If you have too much stock, your stock is going to become obsolete and you're going to need additional storage. So you want to find that point where you don't have too little stock and you also don't have too much stock. What also happens is if you have too little stock or you running on the minimum amount of stock, you're going to have to keep ordering all the time, which means your ordering costs are going to go up. So your storage costs might stay down, but your ordering costs are going to be high. If you have too much stock, on the other hand, your storage costs are going to be high, your ordering costs are going to be low, but again, you might be sitting with potential losses in the sense of your stock might become too old or you might need additional storage. So we have to find that balance where we have the correct stock level, where we don't run out of stock, but we also don't have too much. And in that same sense, we're able to actually balance our costs of ordering stock and storing stock so that we're at the best financial level in terms of how much we are spending on stock and that we don't run out or have too much. So let's have a look at our economic order quantity formula. When it comes to our economic order quantity formula, because we said we are dealing with three main things, namely stock levels, our order cost, and our holding cost or our storage costs, those are the three things we need to take into account when we are calculating our economic order quantity. So, our economic order quantity will be the square root of two times the de annual demand okay so very important annual demand this is in units multiplied by the cost per order so there, there you see the order cost coming in and remember this is per order okay then 
we are going to divide that by our an annual holding cost per unit. So this again is annual. Okay. And there you see our storage cost coming in. So you see we've got our annual demand. Remember, you don't want to have a situation where you run out of stock. So we need to take into account our annual demand when we're working out our economic order quantity formula. We have our cost per order because remember we said we need to find the balance between ordering costs and our storage costs. And then we also have taken into account our storage costs. Now there is an alternative formula which is pretty much the same. The only difference is that bottom line where it's a little bit longer in the sense of its holding cost plus the purchase price multiplied by interest or the required return. Now you might say how do you know which one to use? My answer is let the information in the question guide you. So if all you have is holding costs in the, in the question, then that's all you use. But if you do see something about a purchase price and an interest or a required return, then you use that as well, because then that also needs to be taken into account. If that isn't there, then you just use holding cost. So let's have a look at an example. Cell Limited sells 1,000 computers per month. The variable ordering cost is 10 Rand per order placed. The annual holding cost is made up as follows. Storage space being 6,000 Rand for the year. Insurance per computer held is 50 Rand. And the required return per computer is 200 Rand. Now the required states that we need to calculate the economic order quantity for cell limited. So basically what are they wanting? They want to know what must be the order size when cell makes an order. So what is the economic order quantity? How big must this order be when they make an order? Now, before we start with the solution, let's just make sure that we actually understand what we are required to do and that we've just run over a few things before we actually start with the solution, just to make sure that we recapped on the principles that may apply and that we know exactly what to do. So the first one is we know that we've been asked for the economic order quantity. They could have also asked us what must the order size be? Then in both instances, we know that we need to apply the economic order quantity formula, which is the square root of 2 multiplied by, and this part's in brackets, the annual demand multiplied by cost per order, divided by our annual holding cost per unit. But we also need to remember that that annual holding cost per unit could also be represented by variable holding costs plus the purchase price multiplied by interest, or it could even be the required return. We, then the next point is that when it refers to the annual demand, the annual demand refers to annual usage because the amount that you're using. So those two terms will be used interchangeably. So if you see in a question somewhere they refer to annual usage, you know it's the same as annual demand. On another point, if they give you the usage or the demand in terms of monthly amounts, you will need to go and multiply it by 12 to get to the annual amounts. Then the last point is that fixed costs are not directly related to the number of units and therefore these are not accounted for in the economic order quantity calculation because remember we are looking for the variable costs 
in terms of our order because every time we make an order we're going to have an ordering cost that's why it's included in the economic order quantity formula and then also our annual holding costs that are variable based on our number of units purchased that's what we're interested in because we are trying to find out how many units must we order when we place an order Okay, so let's start our solution. We know our formula to use, so we put our formula right there. Then in the question, we are given our monthly demand. So we need to now convert that to annual. So our annual demand or usage will be 1,000 multiplied by 12. So that will be 12,000. The cost per order is 10 Rand. And then they tell us a whole bunch of stuff about storage. So our annual cost will be made up as follows. The storage base of 6,000 Rand for the year will not be part of our annual holding cost because there, as you see, it says can store up to 2,500 computers per month. But our monthly demand is only 1,000 computers. So we're not going to need additional storage space storage space unless our order goes above 2500 computers the insurance per computer held is 50 rand so as you can see this insurance is per computer so it, we need to take it into account and then we have a des desired return per computer now remember that our annual cost includes our purchase price multiplied by the interest or the required return or our desired return so we need to take this 200 rand into account with our annual holding cost so if we put these figures into our formula we will have 2 multiplied by 120,000 that 120,000 is the 12,000 multiplied by 10 and we divide that by 250 being the 50 Rand for insurance and the 200 Rand desired return per computer. And we calculate the square root of that. It would give us 30,98. Now you cannot have 0.98 units. So the rule of thumb is that you are always going to round up. And that means that the the order size or your economic order quantity will be 31 units.